In our previous presentation, we solved problems based on big O notation. The problems we discussed were simpler ones. Now, in this presentation, we will solve some more problems on big O notation, but this time the problems are going to be a bit different. Let's get started and let's see what are the topics. In this lecture, we will discuss problems based on big O notation. So, let's proceed. The problem number one is find the upper bound for fn equal to 3n plus 8. How do we find the upper bound for this function? The upper bound of the function fn will be a function, let's say gn, which is asymptotically bigger than fn, or in other words, fn is big O of gn. In the last presentation, we saw that we were available with functions fn and gn, and our job was to find whether gn is asymptotically bigger than fn or not. But this time, gn is not available to us. We need to find gn and we are assuming that gn is the upper bound of fn. So, how do we find gn? In order to solve this problem, I have divided the solution into multiple steps. Step number one is to identify the dominant term. Now, what is the dominant term? Dominant term of an expression is the term which contributes most to the value of the expression as the value of n increases. In this expression, what do you think? What is the dominant term? 3n is obviously the dominant term. 8 is just the constant. As the value of n increases, 8 remains 8. But 3n increases with the value of n. So clearly, 3n is the dominant term. In order to prove this, let's draw the table for 3n and 8 and let's plug in the values of n one by one. Let's say n is equal to 10, then 3n becomes 30, but 8 remains 8. If n is equal to 100, then 3n becomes 300, but 8 remains 8. If n is equal to 1000, then 3n becomes 3000, but 8 remains 8. We can observe that 3n increases with the increase in n, but 8 remains 8 throughout. Clearly, 3n is the dominant term. So, we identified the dominant term in this expression. Now, step number 2 is to choose gn according to the dominant term. 3n is the dominant term. We can take gn as n, maybe n log n, maybe n square, maybe n cube, and so on. n is nearest to 3n, and we want the tightest upper bound for fn. Therefore, we can take n as gn. We can take n log n, n square, n cube. These can be the upper bounds of fn. Because the dominant term in fn is 3n, and n log n, n square, n cube, are all greater than n. Therefore, these can be the upper bounds. But we are interested in the tightest upper bound or the least upper bound. Clearly, n is closest to 3n. Therefore, we choose n as gn. We are assuming that gn is the tightest upper bound. Although in the problem, it is written, find the upper bound for fn. It is not mentioned that we need to find the tightest upper bound. But it is always a good idea to find the tightest upper bound even though it is not mentioned. These are also the upper bounds. But the tightest one or the least one is n. So this can be the upper bound for this function. Now our job is to prove this, that this is the upper bound of fn. So this is step number 3. Apply the big O definition. Now we will try to prove that gn is asymptotically bigger than fn and hence gn is the upper bound for fn. For this, we will apply the big O definition. According to the definition of big O notation, fn is equal to big O of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught 
and C and N naught are constants. Now we need to select some value for C. We know Gn is equal to N and the dominant term is 3N. Let us assume that C is equal to 4, one value greater than 3, so that this becomes 4N. Now we need to ask ourselves, is 3N plus 8 less than or equal to 4N? Let's draw the table for 3n plus 8 and 4n and let's plug in the values of n one by one. Let us assume that n is equal to 7. 3n plus 8 for n equal to 7 becomes 29 and 4n becomes 28. At this point, we can observe that fn is greater than c dot gn. But we cannot come to the conclusion at this point because we took just one value of n and that value is also small. Let's take n equal to 8. 3n plus 8 becomes 32 and 4n becomes 32 because 8 into 4 is 32. At this point, we can observe that fn is equal to c dot gn. What if we take n equal to 10? 3n plus 8 becomes 38 as we plug in the value of n as 10 here, but 4n becomes 40. 40 is greater than 38. This means c dot gn at this point is greater than fn. If we take n as 100, then 3n plus 8 is equal to 308 and 4n is equal to 400. 400 is much greater than 308. Clearly, C dot Gn is greater than Fn. What is N naught? N naught is equal to 8. Because at N naught and values greater than N naught, C dot Gn is greater than or equal to Fn. And hence, we can say that Fn is equal to big O of Gn. So, we can say that 3n plus 8 less than or equal to 4n is true. Therefore, 3n plus 8 is equal to big O of n because we assumed that gn is n. And this is true for c equal to 4 and n not equal to 8. I hope with this problem it is clear how to find the upper bound for a specific function. Now let's proceed with problem number 2. Find the upper bound for fn equal to n square plus 10. We will follow the same steps to solve this problem. But before that, I want you to solve this problem on your own. So pause the video and try to solve this problem. I hope you tried solving this problem and you got the solution as well. Now, let's see my solution. Again, we are going to follow the same steps. Step number one is to identify the dominant term. Clearly, the dominant term in this expression is n square because as we increase the value of n, n square also increases, but 10 is just a constant, so it remains the same. Now, let's prove this by drawing the table for n square and 10 and let's plug in the values of n one by one. Let's say n is 10, then it becomes 100 and this is just 10. If n is equal to 100, then this becomes 10,000. n square at this point is 10,000. But 10 remains 10. What if we plug in n as 1,000? n square becomes 1 million. But what about 10? 10 remains 10. So clearly, n square is the dominant term. Now let's proceed with step number 2. Step number 2 is to choose gn according to the dominant term. What is the dominant term in this expression? Dominant term is n square. We cannot take gn as n because n is less than n square. We can take gn as n square. We can take n cube. We can take 2 to the power n. But n square is nearest to the dominant term. The dominant term is n square. And here we can choose n square as gn. After multiplying it by constant, there is the possibility that eventually it surpasses n square plus 10. So we can take n square as gn. This can be the least upper bound of fn 
and that's what we need to prove now let's proceed with step number 3 the step number 3 is to apply the bigo definition now it's the time to prove that gn is the upper bound for fn according to the definition of bigo notation fn is equal to bigo of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c dot gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n not and c and n not are constants let us assume that c is equal to 2 because gn is n square here the dominant term is n square we can take c as 2 as this becomes 2n square is it the case that n square plus 10 is less than or equal to 2n square for large values of n let's try to find out let's now draw the table for n square plus 10 and 2n square and let's plug in the values of n one by one let us assume that n is equal to 1 this becomes 11 and this becomes 2 what if we choose n as 2 2 square is 4 and 4 plus 10 is 14 therefore we will get 14 here and here we will get 8 currently we can observe that fn is greater than gn what if we take n as 3 here we will get 19 and here we will get 18 19 is greater than 18 still fn is bigger than c dot gn what if we take n as 4 if n is equal to 4 we will get 26 here in place of n square plus 10 and here we will get 32 in place of 2n square at this point we can observe that 2n square is greater than n square plus 10 this means c dot gn is greater than n square plus 10 so we can say this that n not is equal to 4 this means that n square plus 10 less than or equal to 2n square is true and therefore n square plus 10 is equal to big o of n square because gn is n square and this is true for c equal to 2 and n not equal to 4 so with this we are done with problem number 2 as well of this set and this means we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one